Hey everybody, welcome back to more Callus Draft League content. As you can see by the timer in the bottom right corner, we've got ourselves a late recording, or I guess an early recording if you want to be cheeky, but long day for me for sure. I was at work for damn near 12 hours today, and by the time I came home and had my own dinner and fed the cats and showered and all that stuff, time kind of got away from me, but... Going to try to get this done while I still have a little bit of steam left, and then I'll probably just head to bed, to be honest with you. But I do have enough energy, hopefully, to make it through this draft, and I'm hoping that you guys enjoy it and find the content worthwhile. If you have been enjoying the content, please do, just real quick, preemptively, hit that like button. It lets me know that you guys want to see more of this, and I appreciate that. So this is actually a little bit weird, because it is red versus blue, but it's backwards. So the team on the left, which is color-coded red for purposes of this, is actually the blue team. And the team on the right, color-coded blue, is actually the red team. Life is confusing, but here we are. Players, real quick. Which gender? Tratufo and Cola Koala for the fake red, actual blue team. And then Sarcasm, team captain Don Tonioni. And Maeve for the fake blue, actually red team. Sure, I didn't make that confusing or anything. Let's get into the action. So the blue team on the left has the opening sequence of picks here, which, as we know, is a double pick. And they are going with seemingly the most boring and standard thing that this metagame has to offer. This seems to be the current state of the metagame. The default 1 and 2. I don't dislike it. It's strong. It makes sense. These mons are good. The only thing that I'm saying is that I'm not absolutely 100% convinced that this is it. It's solved. This is what you should be doing. There's no other way that you could go that would even compare to this. I'm not ready to go there yet. But in the early stages of this meta, yeah, just take two generically strong things. Obviously, these qualify. Let's not spend too much time on it. The question, on the flip side, is always how do you respond to it? And there's definitely no consensus there. If this is the consensus opening 1-2, which it seems to be, there's definitely not a consensus response just yet. And this is a response that I don't think I've personally ever seen before. So let's roll with it. So I'll be into we don't know yet. This is going to be against which gender. And then it's going to be double spiker. Going to take both fortress and skarmory here. Huh. All right. Well, I am going to tell you that I don't like it. And I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. One word. Fortress. The... The Salabi and the Skarm picks are fine. The Skarm is into the meta, which is generally fine. Obviously, the meta can and very well may just go mixed. Likewise, Koala could just pick up a Magneton. So Skarm, while obviously good, is probably not insane in the format. But where I run into issues is the Fori. The Fori, I think, is much, much, much worse in this format than it is in the individual draft format because when you know it's there it's super easy to load up on three four whatever fire moves and really really hose the crap out of it so i don't like it for that reason i think it is not nearly as good in this as it is in other formats and i think there are many picks here that i would prefer whether it's just taking swampert into titar whether it's grabbing Mence or arrow or gar whether it's just taking a Harayama as an immediate response. I'm open to a lot of things. I don't like the Fori pick. But if their game plan is to dominate spikes and just very early on establish we're taking the spikes, deal with it. I guess they've achieved that, but skeptical about Fori. Not a Mon that I rate very highly. I think round one is way too early for Fori in this particular format. So it's going to be which gender on the blue team over here on the left with the double pick. And she is playing against Sarcasm, which is currently just the Celebi. And this is her double pick, which I don't like either. 
Uh, the Salamence, no problem. Good mod in general, good against Celebi, no issue. Where I do have a big issue is the Snorlax. One, don't pick it into Celebi. Two, I just don't think Lax is that damn good in this format. I've said that every time. I think that basically everybody who has first picked, and this is basically first pick because she's got the double pick, basically everybody who has first picked Lax has gone on to regret it. Sometimes they don't even bring it. Sometimes they do bring it, and it sucks. I don't know what Lax's exact win rate is so far in this format, but it is not high. It is not good. It is just too easy to counter. What seems to happen every single time when someone drafts Lax is the other person goes Leech Seeder, Armaldo, Sableye, Weezing, Fighter, and it just becomes an absolute unplayable disaster for Lax. And like I said, which gender just took Lax into the Celebi, which is definitely not a pick that I like. So you can get me with the Mance without an issue. I'm on board for that, but I definitely would have preferred a different pick. Aerodactyl, Gengar, Regice, whatever. Something else over the Lax here. So as much as I don't like the Fori pick, I don't like the Lax pick either. Early on, picks for everybody, each team anyway, that I don't like. Evens it out. All's well that ends well. Back over to the red team with the triple pick. And they will add as follows. Maeve is going to add a Gengar to her squad. And then it's going to be a Swampert and a Starmie, respectively. Okay. Uh, no, no issue here, unless you want to argue that Blissey should have been taken somewhere. Perhaps just the obvious Skarm Bliss combo, but... Obviously, the three Mons that were taken here are very powerful. I'd be very surprised if Bliss wasn't grabbed on the way back, but we'll address that in a minute. But yeah, I mean, Gar has obvious synergy with Skarmory. It's reasonable against meta. Obviously, it doesn't want to switch into Meteor Mash, or in this case, maybe Psychic if the meta does go mixed. But you could threaten it with Will-O-Wisp, Fire Punch, what have you. And like I said, these two just have obvious synergy. So I don't have a problem with that. Swampert pick, for sure. Got to do that. It is going to obviously be good against the T-Tar defensively. And it has organic synergy with Fortress. There are also two sand immune pokes. And what you know is going to be a game with sand. And Swampert forces a lot of switches. So it's good with spikers in general. Can have roar or just, like I said, by nature of a lot of things can't break through it. It just forces a lot of switches. So... The Swampert pick makes perfect sense to me. And then the Starmie staring down the Mence is pretty good. Starmie's not so good into Lax, but it's okay to take one poke that doesn't hose Lax because it's real easy to get a bunch of other ones that do. So this pick does not offend me. And it seems that Red is prioritizing monopolizing, uh, monopolizing both the good Spikers and the good Spinners in the early goings of this draft. So they've got a strategy. We'll see if it works out or not. Good for them for trying something and having a plan. And wrapping up this opening round, it's going to be... Huh. Going to not take Blissey, actually. The plot thickens. Aerodactyl and Zapdos, respectively. So, Meta Arrow, remember this is playing against Maeve. Uh, the Aerodactyl is good against the Gengar. Is yeah, We'll see against the Skarm, but of course there is the... The looming threat here with these two potentially physical mons. Right now, I'd have the Metagross be mixed, for sure, given what's on the other side. But there is the threat of a Magneton pick later for Cola Koala 44, which obviously would be a threat to the Skarm and would enable these mons if they do want to go physical. Again, do I think the Blissey should have been passed up on here? No. So I'm not clear whether you take it with the Tar or... With the Metagross, I probably would have taken it with the Metagross, especially given the Gengar on the other side. I don't really love passing Blissey back here, but both the Aerodactyl and the Zapdos are good Mons, for sure. Probably the more expendable one, in my mind, is probably the Zapdos. I think what I would have done is given the Aerodactyl to Tratufo to give him the double rock attacker, and then given Blissey to Cola. Now, granted, I would be taking Titar and Arrow into Swampert, so is there an argument that maybe you don't want to do that? Sure, but, like, 
you can go HP Grass T Tower and just load up on a bunch of other things that hate on Swampert. I think you'll be fine. That's probably what I would have done personally. I don't love passing Blissey back, but these are obviously good Pokemon and reasonably good picks. I would be completely, utterly beyond shocked if somehow Red Team passes on Blissey again. Surely they're going to grab it here, right? Uh, and they do, and it, it would just be baffling to me, inconceivable that they don't. So, Regirock, huh? Not often that it is Regirock as the first Reggie picked, but let's just go a matchup at a time. Uh, Blissey on OU4 teams is, I don't want to say universal, but like damn close is a staple and just makes a ton of sense with what's being built here. Dawn seems to be building something in the vein of an OU team. An interesting thing with the Swampert and the Fory, and this is just kind of a thing in draft formats in general, I don't like 4X weaknesses in open draft formats. I think they're very, very punishable. But a weird quirk somehow is as bad as they think they are. If you draft a bunch of them, if you overload on them, then the opponent can't actually cover everything. You can't have both Hidden Power Grass for Swampert and Hidden Power Fire for Fory, just as an example. Now that, to me, I don't think is as good as it sounds, because something like Titar can just have Flamethrower plus HP Grass, problem solved. And the same is true for a lot of other Pokemon, but for things that don't have access to an organic fire move, you have to pick whether you want to have HP Fire or HP Grass. There's more than nothing to it. But regardless of that, I do like the Blissey pick on Dawn's team. Like I said, I don't necessarily know that Blue on the left should have actually given them Blissey. I probably would not have allowed this, but Blissey, certainly if it is available, is a good pick here. So Sarcasm taking Regirock. Like I said, very rare that Regirock is the first Reggie off the board. It gets taken in basically every draft, as it should. All three Reggies are good. But generally speaking, at least Regice, if not both other Regis, are considered better than Regirock. So Regirock here is sensible. It's earlier than usual, but it is good into both Salamence and Snorlax. It's a normal resist that goes pretty well 1v1 against Lax. And then obviously it threatens Mence with the Stab Rock Slide as well as T-Wave. So yeah, I, I don't hate this pick. I really don't. Like I said, did he need to take it there? Is it possible that if he waits, he could get it on the swing back? Probably. So I think I would have gotten greedy there and grabbed something else. But I don't hate the pick. If he feels that it's good in the matchup, and so far it is, then I don't hate grabbing it now. I don't hate just sticking to your guns. And the Regirock, I think, is basically an absolute guaranteed lock to ultimately end up making the team. And we'll see how it ends up performing when the actual match plays out. So now we have the triple pick for the blue team. It's so confusing with the blue-red swapped. But again, that is the team on the left. And they are going to do the following. Raikou. Dragonite. And Milotic. Okay, taking these picks one at a time. The Raikou... I mean, Maeve only has two pokes right now, so, like, it's too early to say. But with the two things that she does have, Raikou does win the 1v1 against both of them. So, makes sense in that regard. Hard to know how the matchup will shape out until she picks more pokes. But for now, Raikou makes plenty of sense. And also, there's certain matchups where you don't want Raikou. For example, you're not going to pick it into Blissey in the middle matchup. And it's really not that great against Celebi either. So, I guess if you're going to be... On this left-hand team, the blue team, and you're going to take Raikou somewhere. The matchup where it's going to make sense is not into the Selby, not into the Blissey. Might as well take it into the other matchup. So there you go. It's a Raikou. Uh, the Dragonite pick, I definitely like. It's the exact kind of Pokemon that tends to break the core, the kind of cores that Dawn has. Uh, against these slow, passive 4 teams, especially with Physical Wall plus Bliss, Mixed Breakers is where you want to be. Very easy to customize a set. For example, Flamethrower, HP Grass, Focus Punch. That hits every single one of these in a very meaningful way. Dragonite, the exact kind of poke that you want to have in this kind of matchup. I think that is a great pick for Tratufo. And it is guaranteed, in my mind, 
that the Dragonite not only makes the team, but is a very dangerous threat in the matchup. And then which gender? She's going to pick up Milotic, which it seems to be a pretty common theme that the men's drafters themselves grab the Milo, possibly a little bit of paranoia that somebody on the other team, specifically their opponent, grabs it. So there is that. It does have some synergy with what's already taken here. For example, Milo is obviously an ice resistance, whereas Mentz is weak to ice. And then it also has some play against the Regirock. The one thing that's weird about the Milo is that it isn't very good against Starmie or Celebi. So, like, eh. But the same can be said about basically any bulky water. And if which gender is determined that she's going to have some kind of bulky water somewhere, you might as well grab the best one available and just accept that it's not going to be amazing against being against Starmie. Doesn't mean it's not a good poke. Doesn't mean it won't be good in the matchup. It just isn't going to be perfect. And that's fine. So Maeve here has the double pick. And then we're going to bounce it back. So this is what she's going to do in this situation. And oh boy, is this interesting. She's going to go with Dugtrio and Vaporeon. I, I dig it. Hey, you guys are used to be bitching about Doug. It makes perfect sense here. This is where you're supposed to pick Dugtrio. There's a Raikou on the other side. Dugtrio's good there. There's a Metagross on the other side. Dugtrio's good there. And you are the Skarmory drafter. So if your opponent does get any bright ideas about taking Magneton, that is now not nearly as free and as safe as it was a moment ago. Because now, if you're wrong, if you go to switch the Magneton into the Skarmory, and they double back to Doug, you are so porked, especially if you didn't bring a spinner, you're going to get triple spiked on, and you're going to lose to the Skarmory. So between the Magneton protection, being good against Meta, being good against Raikou, and the fact that you can boom into it with Gengar, or now Baton Pass into it with Vaporeon, the Doug Trio makes perfect sense and this is exactly when and why you're supposed to pick that poke so i love the doug trio pick there for mave and then the vaporeon makes sense as well like i said she was i mean she's building a stally team here this looks like an ou stally team granted it's not gonna have the blissey that it usually has but this kind of core you just add a clay doll and a blissey and you've got an ou team basically uh, usually the water is like Suicune or Milotic, but Vaporeon is a fine backup option. And like I said, it does have some perks that Milotic does not have, such as the ability to Baton Pass to the Dug Trio, or in this case to Pass Wish as well. So Maeve's team I think is very cohesive, and I think the Dug Trio pick was spot on. I think this was a really good double pick for Maeve, and I'll certainly keep an eye on that matchup. It is getting quite spicy. So now, we go back to the triple pick for the dudes and one gal on the left. It is the blue team masquerading as the red team, and they are going to do this. Heracross. Registeel. And would you look at this pick. And Porygon 2. Boy, are we getting spicy with the counter picks up in here. I love this C matchup between Cola, Koala, and Maeve. I can't wait to talk about that one. I can't wait to see how that one plays out. But let's do one thing at a time. The Heracross pick, money, does super effective damage against all three of these. Megahorn, Rock Celebi's World. Likewise, Starmie isn't living Megahorn anytime soon. Regirock can live a Megahorn, but it's not a fan of Brick Break or Focus Punch. And this is a blue offense, it seems, for which gender. The Heracross is the perfect pick here and is a huge threat against everything that Sarcasm currently has. So, a awesome pick. Perhaps the exact ideal perfect pick. Love the Heracross there. Really good. Really, really good. A couple of these matchups really, really intriguing me. Uh, Tratufo here is going to grab Registeel. Sure, I mean, it doesn't blow me away into what Dawn has. Actually, it kind of underwhelms me into what Dawn has. It doesn't beat Swampert 1v1. It doesn't threaten Blissey other than, like, random focus punch that it never carries or, like, booming on it. Meh. And it really, really doesn't threaten Fortress. In fact, it gets spiked up on. So it seems kind of bad into what Dawn has. But the, the one thing that I can 
that I could say is a saving grace, the one, like, fine, I can accept this pick, is that Tertufo simply needs a rock resist. He's got Zapdos and Dragonite. They're both rock weak. He has no rock resist in sight. They're going to dry up. So I guess he's going to take what he perceives, probably correctly, as being the best one still remaining. You could argue that he could take, you know, the Flygons, the Dawn fans of the world down the road. Dawn fan in particular being a rapid spinner into a Fortress Drafter. But, like, there's always counterplay. If you take the Flygon, both the Swampert and the Blissey, bare minimum, are going to have Ice Beam and who knows what else gets taken. Dawn fan's not perfect either. Not good into Pert. Doesn't love Ice Beam or Toxic or whatever from Bliss. Doesn't love a potential Toxic from Fori. Any Rock Resist you take here is going to have its issues. The Registeel, like I said, doesn't blow me away in the matchup. It underwhelms me against Dawn's squad. But if you feel that you need a Rock Resist, and honestly you probably do, I guess now would be the time, and I guess this is one of the better ones. The Porygon 2. Ooh, baby. I, I mean... Thunderbolt alone is going to cover the Skarm and the Vaporeon, and then obviously you could trace the Dugtrio Arena Trap, and then P2 also threatens T-Wave against Gengar, so yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this Bolt Beam Trace T-Wave combo here threatens the entire team that Maeve has, so this matchup is very back and forth with counter picks, and that is an earlier than usual Porygon 2, but it is spicy. It seems good in the matchup for sure. Hey, very much keeping my eye. I think that is my favorite matchup so far. I mean, they're all interesting. This has been a draft that is genuinely intriguing me thus far. Really liking where we are right now, but I think so far this C matchup is the one that fascinates me the most. And wrapping up this round, it's going to be Sarcasm and Dawn with the final two picks. And they are going to go... <laughs> These are good picks. Weezing. And Harry Mama. Uh, the Weezing is into not just a Snorlax, but also a Heracross. What? That is the world's greatest Weezing already. If it happens to get value against the Mints or be annoying for the Milotic... Sure, bonus points, but like, wheezing into Snorlax and Heracross, that is a devastating pick. That like, oh man, which gender has got to be kicking herself a little bit. That is the poke that you don't want your opponent to grab there. That wheezing pick is devastating. Hell, I mean, maybe if he doesn't take it there, which gender herself or convinces one of her teammates to just grab wheezing because it's that much of a blowout. But gave the opponent one opportunity to take it. Sarcasm took it. And oh boy, is that Weezing going to be an effing problem. Wasn't sure about this matchup. Now I definitely like Sarcasm's end. And we'll see how which gender bounces back from that. But this Weezing is going to be an issue. Uh, the Lax or the Hera alone is a good enough reason to pick Weezing. When you're against both, oh boy. The Weezing's going to be an effing problem. And then the Hariyama pickup is absolutely money as well. Great into Titar. Again, the Titar alone, a good enough reason to pick Hariyama. But the fact that it is a second rock resist and it threatens Registeel and it fits perfectly, just so smoothly and organically on this kind of 4E stall team. Mwah! Chef's kiss. Perfect picks here. Weezing and Hariyama, <laughs> man, uh, devastating picks, truly, both of these, like, uh, right on the money with those, not a good round there for the blue team, those are really good red team picks to round out the fourth, so time for the fifth picks, as we go back to Tratufo, and we work our way to the right, they're going to do this, Gyarados and Jolteon. Sure, uh, you can get me there on the Gyarados. This is very much strategy versus anti-strategy. We have a, I mean, Registeel being the exception, but a very, very aggro team here for Tratufo against a very, very stally team for Dawn. But the Gyarados makes plenty of sense to me. There's not really a fantastic Gyar answer on the other side right now. Blissey can have T-Bolt, Fori can have Boom. 
Hariyama could have, like, counter or something. But the Gyarados, more often than not, is going to be a pretty legitimate threat into Dawn. And these guys are going very opposite ways, like I said. Very aggressive for Tratufo, very stally and reactive for Dawn. Can't wait to see how it plays out. And the C matchup, boy, the gift that keeps on giving. It is so back and forth with the counters. The Jolteon makes a ton of sense as well. It'll outspeed Dugtrio, not get trapped, but Taunt pass away. And then just having the T-Bolt coverage, really good against the Skarm, really good against the Vaporeon. And Jolteon tends to beat Gengar 1v1 as well, outspeeds it, threatens T-Wave, what have you. Jolteon makes a ton of sense in the matchup too. The C matchup is spicy. So triple pick for the red team. And they are going to do this. Cloyster. And then Sceptile and Steelix. Jeez. It's crazy. Uh, I'm having a great time with this draft. These picks are just, every pick is so impactful. Uh, the Cloyster is just the first one that, like, I mean, Sarcasm may feel that he that he lacks ways to win, that he lacks forward momentum or, like, actual closers. And he might be right. His team potentially, especially if he leans with a defensive Celebi or defensive Starmie, his team right now is a little bit on the passive side. So, like, maybe you do need spikes. You certainly appreciate it. You're taking spikes into an opponent who doesn't have a spinner, so there's that. Now, Cloyster can kind of be set-up bait for Lax. It just sits there and curses on your face and very quickly gets out of control. And likewise, Heracross, whether it's SD Brick Break or whether it's Sub Focus Punch, obviously could be a, big, a pretty big threat to Cloyster. And then Salamence, it depends on the set, but obviously a mixed set is also a threat to the Cloyster. So I don't think it's perfect, but let's not forget about how we started this draft with the very early Fory and the very early Skarm. It seems that the red team is very, very intent on dominating spikers and spinners, which they have very much done. There is not a single spiker or a single spinner picked by the blue team so far. Totally, totally dominant the other way with three spikers and three spinners each on the team on the right. Zero of either on the left. So that's interesting. Uh, Sceptile adds a Leech Seed user to synergize with Spikes. It also gives you a poke that, again, another poke that threatens Tyranitar. However, other than those things, it does not strike me as fantastic in the matchup. It's not great into Gyarados. Yes, it can have Thunder Punch, but it's not great into Gyarados. It's not great into Dragonite. Same shit, it can have HP Ice. But both of these things can Dragon Dance, get ahead of you, and one-hit KO you with HP Flying. And then I don't think it's fantastic into Zapdos either. You don't have a 4x weakness that you can hit on that. And it can have things like HP Ice, Drill Peck, T-Wave is devastating, what have you. Sceptile is a good poke in general. I don't know that it blows me away in this particular matchup. I'd have to think of what else I would have liked to have seen taken there instead. Perhaps Regice, I think, would be reasonable in this matchup. But the Sceptile pick, eh, doesn't blow me away. And then the Steelix, man. Holy impactful pick, Batman, yet again. This is like the wheezing all over again. You just pick Steelix into someone who has Jolteon and Raikou and Aerodactyl. The Steelix is going to be a nightmare. Those electrics are going to possibly have to carry, like, HP fire or HP water or some absolute garbage to hit the Steelix. And it's going to be a pain for the arrow as well. Uh, this it, it's... A perfect fit for Maeve. I mean, she's building a total stall team anyway. The Steelix is a huge hoser against what Cole is building. So, similar in impact to the Weezing, I think that was a big matchup swinging pick that just makes perfect sense for her team. And now I think I lean towards her side of the matchup. At five pokes each, I think I would rather be Maeve. I think that Steelix pick was massive. But... I can't wait to see it play out. It's such an exciting draft. Which gender now with the double pick? What shall she do? Let's see. Okay. Very interesting. She is going to go with Claydol and also Alakazam. Very interesting stuff. So 
obviously she feels that she needs a spinner when her opponent just took Cloister. So, yeah, I mean, Claydol, I guess, is the best spinner available, but, man, Claydol is pretty jank into Celebi, Starmy, Cloister. I, I guess it's, like, okay enough against Regirock and Weezing, but Claydol doesn't blow me away in the matchup, but it checks boxes that she needs. I mean, she needs a Rock Resist, so there you go, and she needs a Spinner, so there you go. Not that Dawn fan would be really that much better. So, all right, I guess I guess Clay all it is a necessary evil. Uh, the Alkazam, on the other hand, hey hey hey, that seems like a big threat when your special wall is Celebi, which is generally a fine special wall, but Zam can outspeed you and have like CM Fire Punch or CM Ice Punch or whatever the case may be, and. Alakazam can absolutely beat Celebi in the late game 1v1. It seems like a very legitimate threat. Psychic obviously would devastate Weezing. CM plus anything, whether it's Psychic, Thunder Punch, whatever, would absolutely ruin the Cloister's life. Alakazam should beat Starmie one-on-one, -on -one, and if you T-wave it, it'll synchronize it back to you. Yeah, I like the Zam. I think the Zam is a good pick. Here comes the triple red pick. As we swing back the other way, they have opted for Medichan. Very interesting in this matchup. And then Slowbro and Dusclops. Ooh, baby. Medichan's a little bit out of left field. That is not what I anticipated Maeve to take. She has a very dedicated, stall-oriented team here. And Medicham is obviously not that. Uh, furthermore, it doesn't really blow me away here. It, it's not, I mean, none of these things switch into it super duper well, but so much of this stuff outspeeds it and threatens it. Aerodactyl, obviously, 1v1 is going to get the better end of Medicham. Raikou, I mean, again, it can't switch into Medicham, but Medicham can't switch into it either. And if they're staring each other down 1v1 from even ground, Raikou wins. And the same can be said about Jolteon. So the Medicham is... It's a great poke. I just don't know about it in this matchup. I think I'd rather have it... Uh, probably against either of the other opponents, to be honest with you. But I don't know if there's any like defensive element and they just don't want to pass it back. I don't know... I mean, it does have Baton Pass, so if she's thinking of going that way, it's yet another thing that can Baton Pass into Doug or Baton Pass into Skarm and get free spikes. I don't hate the Medicham. It just doesn't stand out to me as doing anything in particular in this matchup. An intriguing pick. I, I've, I've understood everything that Maeve has done up to this point, and I'm not saying I hate the Medicham. I just don't really get it, whereas I've understood the others. So, yeah, I interesting. See how the Medicham performs if it ends up making the team. Slowbro for Dawn. Sure. I mean, T-Wave is obviously good against this team. And with the way that it's trending, where it is very, very aggressive, there may be three Dragon Dancers for Tratufo. Uh, one Bulky Water really might not be enough. You might want as many T-Waves and as many Ice Beams and as many Bulky Waters as you can get. So... Here is our friend Slowbro attempting to help the cause. Dusclops is not one that needs a lot of explanation. I think it is as simple as trying to protect the spikes. Just took Cloister. Opponent just took a spinner. You're trying to protect those spikes with Dusclops. Though there is the added bonus. I mean, Sarcasm maybe was going to take the Dusclops anyway. But the fact that Alakazam was also picked makes it that much better. Because Dusclops with Shadow Ball is very reasonable against Alakazam. And in fact can sometimes one hit KO it depending on the EVs of both Pokemon. And as a bonus bonus if it happens to switch in on a Boom or a Body Slam or a turn. Whatever normal attack from the Lax. Then that is gravy as well. So the Dusclops as I thought the Weezing was is the perfect pick. Sarcasm in particular I think is drafting well. If I had to, as of right now, say the one person that I think is drafting the overall best in this particular draft, I believe that is Sarcasm. So, uh, Cola and Tratufo 
Going to wrap up this round, and then we have our very final round of back and forth. We are nearing the end, but I assure you that these late picks really matter and often get played and often change matchups. So bear with me. The picks are Moltres and Ente. Ha! Ha, ha, ha. Well, Cola's got to be respecting that Steelix on the other side. I think Cola realizes how devastating that Steelix is and how bad he is against it. And is starting the compensation right now is going to pick at least one, if not two or three pokes that all meaningfully hit the Steelix. And obviously Moltres is one of them. It's going to hit the Skarm as well. Gengar doesn't want to switch in on it. Dugtrio doesn't want to switch in on it. Metacham doesn't want to switch in on it. Moltres seems like a very legitimate threat in the matchup. Obviously, the Vaporeon can switch in on it, but the Vaporeon can't do it all, and there's a whole heck of a lot on this lineup that threatens Vaporeon. So uh, I like the Moltres pick quite a bit. Seems like a very legitimate threat in the matchup. And I'm not sure where it should have gone or when, but I want to note that it is crazy to me that Regice has not yet been selected somewhere in here. That, that feels very, very unusual to me. But cross that bridge whenever it gets picked. I mean, it's it's going to get picked, right? Sometime in the next round? Eh. Anyhow, uh, Entei in this middle matchup. Yeah, I mean, Entei into Blissey is, is eh. But... I mean, it threatens the Fortress and the Sceptile, obviously, and then can have HP Grass for Pert and for the Slowbro, so, like, fine. But, like, it's also threatened by the Swampert and the Slowbro, and, like, also if the Hariyama is thick fat, then the Entei is really going to do dick all to it. Even, like, 2CM boosted HP Grass or something, really, really underwhelming against the Hariyama. I don't think I like the Entei pick very much, and I don't think it's going to make the team. I think between the Blissey, the two waters, and the Hariyama on the other side, I just, I can't see it doing much. I mean, you can run some, like, janky physical version of it, but, like, A, it's terrible, and B, it doesn't even beat the waters still. I don't like the Entei pick. I think the Entei pick is kind of bad. There's got to be something else that you can do in that matchup, but... I don't think the Entei is going to do anything, and I don't think that he's ultimately going to bring it. So, over to the the right side here for our final round, our final back and forth on picks. Before we wrap up the draft, it's going to be the following. It's going to be Cradilly, what, and Houndoom. Huh. Cradilly, huh? I've seen Cradilly against against Snorlax as a normal resist with Leech Seed. But I'm not sure not sure what it does in this middle matchup. It doesn't when your opponent's loading up on DD users that can all hit you at least neutrally if not super effectively. Not clear what the Cradilly actually does in this matchup. Gonna say that I don't really like this pick and that I don't think this really does anything, but TBD, but this is not the pick that I would make. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And the Houndoom is interesting as well. I I think this is double duty. I think not only is Sarcasm pro uh, protecting his own Celebi and his own Dusclops that he just took, so his opponent can't take Houndoom, but he's also threatening to bring it against the Alakazam and really, really be sure against the Zam because ultimately it's still, I mean, he's taken some precautions, some steps, but the Alakazam is still potentially dangerous. The issue with actually bringing the Houndoom from Sarcasm is that it's really not all that good against the rest of this team. Milotic obviously beats it. Salamence, big threat to it. You could Will-O-Wisp the Lax, but it can just have Refresh or Sub or Rest or whatever and make that not a thing. You could threaten Heracross, but Heracross can also threaten you. And same thing, you can threaten Doll, but, but Doll can also threaten you. 
I don't actually know how good the Houndoom is in the matchup. You can at least threaten to bring it to make the Alakazam think twice, but I don't know that the El uh, that the Houndoom rather is actually going to end up making the team. We'll see. Triple pick on the other side. We've got Slow King and then Quagsire. Okay. And Venusaur. Slow King, huh? Mm. Yeah, I mean, Cola may simply feel that he needs a bulky water and may feel that this is the best one available, but it doesn't even, it doesn't really feel like a matchup where, where a bulky water is even really necessary. I don't know that a bulky water is really what gets it done against, against Maeve. I don't think Slow King is a bad poke. I just don't really, not really clear what it does on the matchup. And I mean, I don't really know that it beats Skarm or Gar or Metacham with Shadow Ball. I don't know. Seems okay, I guess, but just feels like taking a generic Mon and just like checking a box. Hey, bulky water, there you go. Rather than doing anything in particular, I could kind of, I could take or leave that pick. It doesn't blow me away. The Quagsire is another weird one. I'm not clear. What are you trying to cover? What's the what's the rock attacker on the other side that you that you're worried about? What's the fire attacker on the other side that you're worried about? I don't. I mean, not only are you taking Quagsire into two grasses, but, like, what are you trying to represent? What are you trying to cover? I, I think the Quagsire pick's kind of bad as well. I'm not clear what purpose it really has in this matchup. I I'm with it on the first five for Tritufo, but I don't really like the Entei or the Quagsire pick. I'm not, I'm not seeing the role that they're going to have in this matchup. So maybe Tratufo's draft in my mind starting to fall off a little bit. I would have liked to have seen different picks here. Which gender is going to pick up Venusaur for this A matchup? Interesting into an opponent who just took Houndoom. I don't think I love the Venusaur either. Loses to Celebi 1v1. Can lose to Starmie 1v1 if it brings Psychic or Ice Beam or whatever. There's not even that many grass weaknesses. There's the... I mean, eh, there's three. There's the Starmie, the Regirock, the Weezing. But, like, there's kind of asterisks on all of that, though. Like, you can HP Grass or Razor Leaf or whatever move. Giga Drain, say, the Regirock. But, like, you don't kill it. And then you just get T-waved back. And then I don't think the Cloister's ever going to be stupid enough to just sit there and get Giga Drained. I don't know. Doesn't seem great against the Weezing. Doesn't seem great against the Houndoom. Doesn't seem great against the Selby. Even the stuff that it's supposedly good against. I mean, switching it into any of those things. Cloyster can just have Ice Beam. Regirock can just T-Wave you. Starmie can just have Psychic or Ice Beam. Eh. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, I, don't, I don't really like this entire round of picks for blue team on the left. The Slow King, the Quagsire, and the Venusaur picks honestly all kind of underwhelm me so uh, i would have probably done this entire round differently noting that there are still pokemon like regice and charizard that haven't been picked that feel quite a bit more powerful and impactful than these pokemon but hey i'm not the one drafting they can take what they like so swinging it around it's going to be on mave to finish out her draft and this is not the way that i thought that she was going to do it but it certainly gives uh cola something to think about in the builder gonna go with gonna go with kingdra and also ludicolo a pair of swift swimmers here at the end for mave i, I don't hit it it um Swift Swim actually has a lot of merit here because w once you activate Swift Swim, these pokes become faster than anything on the other side. Noting that Cola does not have a special wall or anything even really close to a special wall. Raikou is the closest thing and that really isn't going to cut it in general and even less so when there's a Dugtrio there. So 
And this double swift swimmer plan is really abrupt and out of nowhere, but it might work if she commits to it. Honestly, I mean, once once you click rain dance, once swift swim is active, what switches in? You outspeed and one hit KO the arrow. Once uh, outspeed and one hit KO the Jolteon. Outspeed and one hit KO the Moltres. Porygon doesn't really want to switch in. Man, those seem like huge picks. I don't. I, I mean, the really scary thing with Maeve's team is that she could bring any combination. She could bring any of these eight mons. There's not anything that stands out to me like the Cradilly or the Quagsire or whatever, where I just instantly dismiss it and go, "Yeah, you're not bringing that." But really, truly, any of these eight she could end up bringing. And I think the Kendra and the Ludicolo, if she opts to take a more aggressive approach, if she just, if she says fuck it on the Skarm, if she just, like, cuts the Skarm and the Vaporeon and just goes really, really aggro, Boomgar, Boom Steelix, Metacham, Dugtrio, Double Swift Swimmer, that might get it done, honestly. It really, really changes this matchup and changes the way that Cola needs to build. Uh, so I really like these picks by Maeve. I think that I wouldn't have anticipated that at all. That really came out of the blue. But, I mean, Cola, I think, needs to just take Regice now and wall the shit out of those things. But the matchup definitely just changed. Swinging it back. Final round of picks for the blue team on the left. Their triple picks are as full. What the fuck? Okay. What is this Pokemon? Sharpedo. Executor. And Articuno. Okay. Uh... My thoughts on Sharpedo is that it's awful and should never be picked, and this has got to just be a troll or a throwaway, but what are we doing here? Uh, Sharpedo blows. Had to be something better to pick there. On to the next pick. Executor, huh? I don't hate it. It's very, very slow, but so is Dawn's entire team, so it actually outspeeds... A decent portion of this stuff and can threaten it with sleep powder and then grass X where X is, you know, hidden power fire or whatever is pretty reasonable against Dawn. I could see like a sunny beam set, for example, actually really terrorizing Dawn, save the Blissey, and of course Executor has boom. I don't think Executor is an amazing Pokemon and I don't think it's necessarily amazing in the matchup. Though I think it's reasonable in the matchup. But on paper, I like the Executor more than I like both the Entei and the Quagsire. And I wouldn't actually be shocked if the Executor gets the nod over those two pokes and does more than nothing in the matchup. As far as the Articuno, eh, sure, for me it would have been Regice instead. But I think this is, by and large, the same concept. This is a direct response to the Kingdra and the Ludicolo. And yeah, that's, I mean, Koala needed a direct response to the Kingdra and the Ludicolo. So uh, will the Articuno be enough? Maybe. It seems pretty good in the matchup. It doesn't like rock slides from Steelix or Metacham. But other than that, it's pretty damn safe. And it's something that Maeve is going to have a hard time removing. So I think that was a very wise and very necessary pick here at the end for Cola. And finally, Sarcasm and Dawn are going to wrap us up with Crobat and Slay King, which concludes a draft in which inconceivably both Charizard and Regice were simply not picked. Fucking Sharpedo was picked, but Charizard and Regice were not. Something has gone terribly wrong here for that statement to be true. Nevertheless, uh, the Crobat here, uh, I don't hate it. I don't think you need more help against the Heracross, but it's that. And I don't really think the Venusaur is a big threat to you either, but it's okay against that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because I think it's very unlikely that the Crobat, uh, that, uh, that the Crobat gets played. But that was the pick. 
I would much rather that pick had been Regice or Charizard. Probably Regice in this matchup. But instead, it's a Crobat. And the Slaking is the same deal. I mean, it, never say never. Kind of really doubt that it gets played. Multiple normal resists on the other side. It's just a crapshoot guessing game. It is worth noting that Tratufo uh, and Cola both never took rapid spinners. So the spikes that can be generated by both Dawn and Maeve are just going to be there to stay. To compensate for that, not drafting spinners, both Tratufo and Cola have drafted very, very aggressive teams. So it's just going to be offense versus defense, which is fine. But the fact that neither of them have spinners, uh, we'll see. The slaking in particular, I mean, it's not awful. But like I said, multiple normal resists and intimidate on the other side. It's a prediction, Mon. So, I mean, if Don is confident in his ability not only to get it in, but also to guess the right move, since it's like universally choice banded, then, yeah, then I guess, I guess that will, I guess that'll be the plan. But I've never really been a big Slay King guy. Don is welcome to show me how it's done, but. Not a poke that I have ever really thought very highly of and wouldn't put too much stock into him actually bringing, but we'll see. So, uh, the overview and predictions. Like I said, my very first thing, baffling, inconceivable, crazy to me that neither Charizard nor Regice were picked in this draft. That can't possibly be right. I don't know the precise person to point a finger to, but someone or multiple someones have done something wrong here for sure. There is absolutely no way that Charizard and Regice should not be picked. There's no possible fucking way. Moving on to the matchups themselves, which gender versus Sawchasm? I think the person who drafted overall the best in this, maybe it was Maeve, I really like hers as well, but I think the Overall best draft in this was Sawchasm. Uh, not necessarily the like overall best team in general or on paper, but specifically making picks into his opponent and picks that made sense given what had already happened. And obviously, nuance and circumstances and specific, that's the whole format. I like Sawchasm to win this matchup. I think that... I think that he has the answers to neutralize which gender's threats. I think the Regirock was a great pick. I think the Salve and the Starmie are going to be really sturdy. The Alakazam was scary, but I think that Sarcasm did enough between the Houndoom and the Dusclops to probably negate that. There is the possibility that the Alakazam just wins the day, but I think Sarcasm has enough to hold on. And I think that Weezing pick was really, really devastating. Yes, the Alakazam is good against it. The Alakazam is an invaluable asset that Witch Gender must bring in this matchup because I think that's her best bet to win. But overall, I think Sawchasm has enough. I think he's got a cohesive team that matches up pretty well against Witch Gender's team. And these last couple picks, the Sharpedo in particular, just feels like a meme. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't change the matchup. Doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I would have liked it a lot better if the Sharpedo, like I said, had been Regice or something that doesn't blow. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the edge in this one, taking play skill out of it, just matchup on matchup, mons on mons. I'm gonna predict Sarcasm to win that matchup, but I do think that the Alakazam, under the right circumstances, could be a threat and maybe could get it done for which gender. But I do predict Sarcasm to win. In this middle matchup, Tratufo against Don Tonioni, Ton Ioni, Don Tony, Don, Don. Uh, let's see. Well, I think that, I mean, the Slay King obviously being the exception, but I think that Don's team is pretty damn passive. The Slay King and the Sceptile are a little bit of offense, but this is a very, very defensive team. I think a problem that Don could run into 
is that without spikes, and he does have access to spikes, but let me finish my thought. Without spikes, I think he has a very hard time winning. I think he needs spikes. I think he's relying on spikes to actually kill stuff and actually win the match. And therefore, I think he's obligated to bring the fortress. And I think what Tratufo can do and should do and will do is load up on a million fire attacks to make that very, very challenging. And that puts Dawn in a weird position where either he's going to walk the fortress into a matchup where four or five of Tratufo's mons are very, very prepared to 4x that fortress, or Dawn says, oh, fuck it, it's too dangerous, I'm not going to bring fortress. Yeah, those fire moves will be bad now. However, I think Dawn will have a very, very hard time winning without the spikes from the fortress. So that kind of... Rock in a hard place, I think. Uh, I think overall, by far, the more aggressive team and generally threats are better than answers belongs to Tratufo. I don't like the Entei pick or the Quagsire pick, but I also don't really like the Cordelia or the Slay King pick, so call it a wash with those weird ones near the end. But I'm going to pick Tratufo to win this matchup. I think Don's team is just a little bit too passive, and I think... He's relying too heavily on the Fortress that ultimately, I think, is too easy to hate and to target. I would not be surprised at all if we have Flamethrower Dragonite, Flamethrower Tar, maybe even HP Fire Zapdos, maybe the Entei or the Executor come and they have fire attacks too. Uh, I think the Fortress is going to have a tough time. If Tratufo goes a different way with it and plays it closer to OU and doesn't load up on a bunch of fire stuff, then I think that's just an egregious mistake and an, an egregious misbuild. But if he doesn't do that, then I think Dawn has a very reasonable shot to win since the spikes are obviously good and something that Tratufo can't remove. But I'm going to give Tratufo the benefit of the doubt that he's going to load up on fire, and I think that's going to make Dawn's life difficult. I will predict Tratufo to win that matchup. And then finally, probably my favorite matchup in this particular draft. This one has been very, very back and forth. Uh, Maeve is my other pick, either Maeve or Sarcasm. I think drafted the best out of the players in this one. This was so back and forth. The, uh, the Raikou pick was good, and then great counter to it. The Porygon 2 pick was good, great counter to it. The Steelix pick was devastating, but then Koala dealt with it. I really don't know. It uh, This is the matchup that excites me the most. I'm very much looking forward to see this one actually play out. Uh, gun to my head. Have to make a prediction right now. Uh, I'm going to give the advantage to Maeve. I'm a little bit hesitant about that because, like I said, generally more proactive teams tend to get the job done. The more you attack, the more you get crits, the more you get added effects, whatever. It's way easier to just attack and get lucky than to be on the defensive and stall and just get every turn and every prediction right. So Koala, obviously the aggro in this matchup is at an advantage in that regard. But Maeve's team, I think, makes a lot of sense and is tight. And I think that there's multiple ways that she could go with this in the builder that can make it challenging for Cola to build. Like I said, there's that very, very aggressive version of the team that Maeve could opt for with the double Swift Swimmer, or she could not bring either Swift Swimmer and go very stall heavy, which would also change the matchup, and it would make the Articuno not that exciting for Cola, but I think the Articuno, like, basically has to come, because otherwise you get really, really cucked by those Swift Swimmers if you're wrong. And the Articuno is pretty damn good in the matchup. I do think that's a difficult poke for Maeve to remove. However, it's the same issue where Cola doesn't have any rapid spinners. So if Maeve gets even a single spike down, obviously she can get more. Then if she plays well and plays tight and grinds it out, she might be able to win the day with the spikes. So this third prediction is the one that I feel the least confident about. And it's the matchup that I'm most interested in and most looking forward to watching. But... Gun to my head, make a prediction, I'll pick Maeve. So based on my predictions, which really mean nothing at all, I've got a 2-1 victory 
for the red team on the right with Sarcasm and Maeve taking it down and team captain Don Tonioni falling to Tratufo. But as always, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Who do you guys think won the draft? And specifically, who do you like in the A matchup? Who do you like in the B matchup? Who do you like in the C matchup? Can't wait to hear your thoughts, but getting late. Gonna probably call it a night sometime soon. Until next time, folks, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.